Oh no! It's here! It's coming for us! Let's hope it doesn't find us! Oh god, it's found us! Red Meat is here! Run for your lives! Hold up! Is Red Meat really as bad as the recent hype has led us to believe? Find out today on The Science of... internet and welcome to the science of using sci-fi and the news to educate people on how science actually works here in the real world as many of you have heard by now the world health organization has come out with a press release yesterday stating that it's warning people not to eat processed meat saying it can cause cancer bad news for bacon and sausage lovers the world health organization says those foods can cause colon and stomach cancer Processed meat, like bacon, sausages, and cold cuts, cause cancer. The World Health Organization says processed sausage and hams and red meat caused an increased risk for cancer. This is a story that's taking over social media this noon. We're talking about a new study that links processed meats and red meat to cancer. It's been all over Twitter and Facebook recently, and vegetarians and vegans have been having a field day with this. While not a vegetarian or vegan myself, I would love to take the news of this report at face value. After all, our artificially high consumption of meat isn't exactly good for the planet on many fronts, but that's for another video. The obvious question is what the report actually states, because let's face facts here. The news is rarely ever perfectly accurate when it comes to matters of science. And as always, I will have my sources in the description. To get to the matter, we have to get to the press release itself, because that's the only way to determine what it says. I personally never trust commentary on what primary sources actually say. So I always go for the primary source itself. So what does the WHO press release have to say? First, we have to determine definitions of terms, because without definitions, there's too high a likelihood of miscommunication, and that goes against the heart of science communication. The two obvious terms which need to find here are red meat and processed meat. The WHO report defines both terms clearly so that they are not responsible for any miscommunication to the public, but rather anyone who reports on the press release is potentially liable for such miscommunications. They define red meat as unprocessed mammalian muscle meat. For example, beef, veal, pork, lamb, mutton, horse, or goat meat. And this includes minced or frozen meat. As far as processed meat is concerned, they call it meat that has been transformed through salting, curing, fermentation, smoking, or other processes to enhance flavor or improve preservation. They elaborate further that most processed meats contain pork or beef, but may also contain other red meats, poultry such as chicken or turkey, organs such as liver, or meat byproducts. What they have done is to come through numerous scientific reports which have researched correlation between meat consumption and colorectal cancer, which is exactly what it sounds like. Excuse me, I'd like to ask you a few questions. And determined a causal link between the two. They used this method to determine that there is a 17% increased risk. Will eventually go down. Oh, 17. There's that 17% bad per 100 grams of red meat consumed per day and an 18% increase per 50 grams of processed meat consumed per day. This means that for every 100 people who have a daily consumption of red meat of 100 grams, and this is over the course of years, 17 of them on average will likely eventually develop colon cancer. If the daily consumption is increased to 200 grams, then the average number of people who develop colon cancer doubles to 34, so on and so forth. For processed meat, for every 100 people who consume 50 grams per day, 18 will eventually develop colon cancer. And remember, this is daily over the course of years. And that number doubles to 36 if the number consumed is doubled to 100. How much is 100 grams, you ask? Because, let's face it, I am American, my target audience is American, we typically don't know such things. So, 100 grams is basically this. It isn't a, exactly a lot of meat, is it? But there's a kicker, at least with red meat. 
While with processed meats, chance bias and confounding of data could be reasonably ruled out, this is not the case with red meat, since several of the scientific papers they looked at show no clear association between red meat and colorectal cancer. The authors state this as a reason to be inconclusive with the result with unprocessed red meat, saying, We concluded that there is limited evidence in human beings for the car carcinogenicity of the consumption of red meat. So what does this mean? It means they're saying, We know that processed meat increased likelihood of cancer, but we'll get back to you on the red meat. I'm willing to bet that since this was published in The Lancet, the publication which published the infamous 1998 Wakefield paper, the publisher urged the World Health Organization to add that last part in to the press release to err on the side of caution to prevent another Wakefield incident. Don't know what I'm referring to? I have a video explaining just that, and since the end of the narrative, The Lancet has been more cautious about the papers they accept. So what is the proposed mechanism for the causes of cancer? According to the press release, the process of cooking meat, the process which kills salmonella, E. coli, and other bugs known to swim around in meat, can produce known or suspected carcinogens from the material already present. You see, cooking is taking heat from the stove and using it to produce endothermic chemical reactions in the meat, and some of those chemical reactions may produce these carcinogens. How much they produce is not clear, but it is enough to increase cancer risk by 17% for every 100 grams you eat every day for years. So that's the catch-22. Cook your meat every day and potentially get colon cancer, or eat it raw and potentially get one of any number of diseases. There were other health effects which were published in that press release, but that's something for the next video. And as far as this thing that I'm already hearing about, big poultry influencing the World Health Organization. I'm gonna have to go with no on that one. Big beef is far bigger than big poultry right now, and big beef is slowly losing its grip while big poultry is gaining ground on big beef. But big beef is still bigger than big poultry, so big beef not only has more incentive to influence the World Health Organization, but more resources to do it. Maybe if this report came out in 2030, 2035, it would be more convincing because I'm anticipating big poultry will have overtaken big beef by then, but not now. As for right now, I consider it a big, huge, heaping pile of bullshit. Oh, that's a patty. That's it. That I... And hopefully, I'll get around to making that second video this time. So subscribe to stay informed. Don't forget to like, favorite, and share this video. Follow me on social media, links in the description. And as always, until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep improving the world around you.